Hey everyone, Dr. Mary here. For today's adventure, we're going to Missouri, specifically St. Charles, Missouri. At the corner of Jefferson and 2nd Streets, on the beautiful grounds of the historic St. Charles County Courthouse, home to several historical landmarks, is a magnificent red granite boulder with an embedded plaque. Let's let this monument begin the story. The Boone Slick Road, St. Charles to Franklin. A trace first marked by the Indians, the trail followed by trappers and hunters, and by Daniel Boone when he discovered the Salt Springs, afterward called Boone Slick, which gave to this road its name. The main highway out of which grew the Santa Fe Trail, the Salt Lake Trail, and the Great Oregon Trail. Marked by the Daughters of the American Revolution and the State of Missouri, 1913. Le Petit Cote, St. Charles, 1769. St. Charles was founded in 1769 by Louis Blanchet and was essentially a colonial town, although much, much farther west. People didn't just settle in the 13 colonies of the East Coast. A few moved west beyond the barriers of the great Appalachians and the mighty rivers. Daniel Boone, with his family and some of his friends, arrived in Missouri in 1799. Boone was in his 60s, hale and hearty, a long hunter for decades, who continued his excursions in this, his new neck of the woods, for many years to come. In 1804, the salt spring which would become known as Boone's Lick was discovered by the Boone clan. Earlier sources, notably the Daughters of the American Revolution, clearly state that the elder Daniel Boone found the spring, but more recent sources attribute the discovery to Boone's sons Daniel Morgan and Nathan. In any event, the two Boone sons decided to give the business of salt production a go. Salt was a valuable commodity, and away from the coast, not so easy to get. Most springs are sweet, or fresh water, and treasured salt or saline springs were often found by watching the wildlife. Deer would gather near them, drinking the water and licking the ground around to obtain the salt. That's why these areas were called licks. People would harvest salt from these springs by boiling the spring water in large kettles to the point where only the minerals, primarily the all-important salt, remained. Boone's Lick Spring was literally out in the boonies, far from civilization. The industrious Boone brothers could use the Missouri River to ship heavy salt downriver to St. Charles, but returning upriver took more effort. By 1805, they had cut a road through the wilderness to return to the salt works overland. And it wasn't long before the Boone's Lick Trail grew beyond a simple commerce road. As increasing numbers of settlers began moving westward, not only did the road open the area to settlement, it acted as a feeder for other trails. For example, in 1821, an enterprising man named William Becknell, living in the area near Boone's Lick, developed the Santa Fe Trail, placing its start point in Franklin, which was just a few miles from Boone's Lick. And so the Boone's Lick Road persisted as a useful route, a highway. It changed through time as many highways do, developing alternate alignments for various sections. This monument, marking the starting point for the Boone's Lick Road, was one in a series of 32 monuments, each placed where there was already a marker along the Boone's Lick Road. Notice the date on this monument. It was placed in 1913, over a century after the road was cut, and just at the beginning of the automobile age. Another 100 years have passed since the series of monuments was installed. In time, Boone's Lick Road was superseded by U.S. Federal Route 40, which in turn was replaced by Interstate 70. While parts of the old road have reverted to wild, many sections still exist in one form or another, still serving travelers. Intriguingly, this particular monument isn't where the road actually began, it's a few blocks away. The original road started about where Louis Blanchette's property was located and followed up the Blanchette Creek Valley into the hills, mentioned in another episode. Today the road is still a major thoroughfare, winding out from historic St. Charles. It's busy, congested, with no place to park, so the monument is better placed where it is, in a location of some prominence. We will return to this series of monuments, each with its own story. Thanks for watching. Please leave a like and hit the subscribe button. Until next time, stay safe and travel well.